I wonder what St. Paul, St. Paul, the one who wrote all those beautiful letters, what did he have to say about the resurrection of Jesus? Stay tuned. Let's discover that. My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. God bless you. We're trying to understand St. Paul, and we're trying to understand Paul about one of the most important things in all of Christianity, and it's the resurrection of Jesus. We're going to be looking at the, especially with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, in St. Paul's letters, he was giving practical teaching of Jesus to the early church in, in Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Greece, Italy, and of course, Israel. The first Christians were struggling to understand what a commitment to Jesus meant in everyday life. There were questions about marriage, the place of women, slavery, division, and the relationship between Jews and Gentiles. <laughs> all rested on the foundation of our faith. Jesus, who is God, lived, died, and three days later rose to new life. Jesus was physically present after the resurrection. Magdalene embraced his legs. Thomas put his finger in the wound in his hand and his fist into his side. Jesus cooked a fish dinner on the shores of the Sea of Galilee and ate with his disciples. <laughs> the Christians in the town of Corinth were asking what the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus practically meant for them. Paul explained their bodies in the tomb would be raised because of their union in faith with the resurrected Jesus. Now, we pay a special attention to Paul's words on the resurrection because 
he says that Jesus actually appeared to him, and he said this, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve, and after that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, <laughs> as to one born abnormally, he, he appeared to me. Our bodies and the bodies of those we love will rise. Now that's important. Belief in the resurrection of Jesus means that you and I look to share Jesus rising from the dead. We have the hope that our bodies will be raised from our graves and live the life that Jesus had when he visited Peter, James, the apostles, uh, the 500, and later Paul. If we do not have this fundamental faith as Christians, all of our life and preaching is empty. Paul says, if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching. And again, uh, if there is no resurrection of the dead, neither has Christ been raised. Or put in the positive, because Christ has been raised, we have the assurance that our bodies also will be raised. What, what a gigantic hope we have in the face of death. It's not the end. Because Christ has been raised from the dead, we share with Him, through faith, the hope and the victory of knowing that we are going to be raised from the dead with new and immortal bodies. <laughs> this faith, first in Christ's resurrection, then in our resurrection, gives us hope in the face of the death of those we love. At, at funerals, all is not lost. They're alive. We're going to be able to join with them physically and spiritually for all eternity in heaven. This is our hope, our joy, our confidence. The love that Jesus has for us, as well as the love we have for those we cherish who have passed before us, will not die. Paul uses the word first fruits to express Christ's resurrection. This means that He is the first to rise from the dead, and we, because of our faith, follow His path. He leads the way. We're, we're the second fruits of the wonder of the resurrection. The victory of Christ will draw us from death into a new resurrected reality. But now, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The resurrection means victory over our sins. Be because of Jesus' resurrection, we have the faith and hope that we can be raised up from the death of our sins. No sin is too great to defeat us. Because of Christ's victory, we have victory over our sin. We can be forgiven. We can move on. We can live the life with God for all eternity in heaven. How do we explain, how do we explain death? Why, why is it necessary that we die? These were the questions that the, the people in Corinth were asking. <laughs> we don't want to die. <laughs> There's something in us that drives us to avoid death. We visit the doctor, we take our pills, uh, we watch what we eat, we try to avoid things that can harm our health, like smoking and drugs. We exercise, we avoid dangerous situations and neighborhoods. We, we support the protection that police and military can give us. We, we watch how we drive and make sure <laughs> we click on our seatbelts. Paul reminds us that death came because of the sin of Adam. Because of Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God's commandments, 
Because of that, you and I are plagued with the reality of death. <laughs> In the face of, of this tragedy, we cry out, is there anyone, anyone out there who can save us from this plague that we so strongly fear and try to avoid? Is there anyone who can save us from death? <laughs> this is where Christ enters. Christ died. He was one with us in our greatest dread. <laughs> he overcame the sin of Adam and its consequences of death. Through faith and hope in Jesus resurrected, we have the assurance that death no longer has control over us. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead came also through a human being. For just as in Adam all died, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life." Now here's an interesting thought. The resurrection of our bodies from the tomb will happen in the future. Uh, there's a struggle going on now for the kingdom of God to happen in our world. Hmm. Now remember, Jesus came preaching the arrival of the kingdom of His Father. When Jesus was present, so was the kingdom. He was God. But there was still an incompleteness that continues today to allow a total surrender of the world and all of us to God the Father. We see Jesus as part of this ongoing battle as He fought against those things that oppose the kingdom. Sickness, division between people, and, and even death. Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. He allowed cripples to walk. He stopped the flow of the bleeding woman. He touched the putrid skin of the leper and brought healing. He broke down prejudicial barriers between Gentiles and Jews, between Samaritans and Jews, between the rich and the poor, between men and women. He raised the dead son of the widow of Nain. He gave life to Jairus' 12-year-old daughter. He raised his friend Lazarus despite being in the tomb for four days. All of this was centered on Jesus' deep love for His Father and His longing that every mind, heart, and soul would surrender to His Father's love. The kingdom was present in Jesus, but its dream for us and our world is still striving to be complete. Please, if you would, I'm going to stop now and ask you, would you please listen to this message? We're going to be coming back, trying to get into some real practical understanding of what Paul teaches about the resurrection. For the past few years, right on our set, we have presented to you a picture of Jesus that has a smile on His face. It's a beautiful incentive for us to understand that the God we believe in is a God who loves us, who even smiles at us with recognition and a sense of welcome and love. Many people, as they look at that picture, they're calling us on the phone and writing and saying, oh, how can we get a hold of that picture? Well, we are going to offer you a print of this wonderful picture, allowing you to be able to have this this image of the smiling Christ. The title of it is The Risen Christ by the Sea. It's by Jack Jewell. And you can be able to experience for yourself and those that you love the joy and the peace of Christ. On the back of, the, of this, this print, you're going to find quotes like this. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be with you and that your joy may be full. Having joy in my life is one of the most important things, and knowing that the joy is based on the fact of God's smiling at me and believing in me. God is approachable in the smiling Jesus as He stood by the sea. Another quote that you might think of as you're understanding this rich, rich love of God is when you fast, 
don't put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. We would like to send you this print um, and we'd like to ask you, would you send a donation of $13 or more to allow us to get it to you and to allow us to be able to continue this important program. Remember, $13 or more to allow the joy and the peace of Christ to enter your life and the lives of those that you love. We're trying to understand the, the power of the resurrection by studying some of the, the words of St. Paul. Think about this. We're able to touch the experience of the kingdom right in this life. The kingdom breaks through when healings happen in hospitals and healing services. People who are separated from each other through hatred, prejudice, uh, and injustice become reconciled. People who are dead through depression, suicidal thoughts, slavery and to addictions and sin are freed to give new life. We join Christ in His ongoing battle to bring about the kingdom of God, and we do it now. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the meaning of the victory of the kingdom of God. Well, despite the fact that the signs of the victory sometimes seem to be overcome by the evil we find when we're listening to the news, we believe the victory has already happened. <laughs> All we have to do now is mop up the vestiges of battle with, with Paul. We believe in the ultimate victory. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of his God and Father when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. <laughs> Our baptism is a, is a concrete experience of the resurrection of Jesus. We see this most forcefully when baptism involves getting into a pool of water, a, a river, or, or a lake and then being submerged, hidden under the water, we are in a tomb, uh, the death, the, the unseen world of mortality. And then we break out of the water, gasping for breath, the breath of life. The victory of Jesus resurrected from the dead to life happens. We share in this life with Jesus. Now. Resurrection power is something that allows us to face death. Well, we all fear and avoid death, but when we live in the confidence of this resurrected life of Christ, our attitude towards death changes. We are willing to join Christ as He fought for the kingdom and know that as we walk with Him, we also walk towards his death. <laughs> Paul knew that because of his close relationship with Jesus, he was part of the body of Christ. Christ was continuing his life through Paul. <laughs> As Christ battled to bring the kingdom of his Father into the world, Paul continued that work. And just as Jesus fought and was overcome by the power of evil and of death, that cruel death on the cross, Paul followed Jesus, knowing that he too would suffer persecution and death. But now, in the face of Jesus' victory over death, Paul was willing to risk even his own life, knowing that, that he had the victory of life after death because of Jesus' resurrection. Moreover, why are we endangering ourselves all the time? Every day I face death. I swear it by the pride in you, brothers, that I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. If at Ephesus I fought with beasts, so to speak, what benefit was it to me if the dead are not raised? All of this wonder, 
All of this victory, all of this transformation of our life happens only if you and I choose to have faith in Jesus. And with this faith comes the need to turn away from the slavery of sin in our lives. Do not be led astray. Become sober as you ought and stop sinning. Although faith is a gift, we choose and then nurture it. Or we can make a decision to remain in the darkness and hopelessness of not believing in the resurrection while holding on to our sin and death. <laughs> oh, what's, what's also disheartening is that many people in our world today deny the resurrection of Jesus. Here we are celebrating and knowing that large numbers of people deny this resurrection. They proclaim uh, that we live our life and then it's ended. <laughs> they say, live and let have a good life. Try to affect good things in your world like justice and peace. <laughs> but all you have to do is pass on to your children and the future generations a better life. Paul echoes their thinking when he says, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. <laughs> I try to explain my belief in the resurrected life of, to unbelievers. It's difficult. One of the most convincing arguments for the resurrection life is the simple statement, and I ask you to think about this, love doesn't die. <laughs> Well, here's another question that was, was raised by the people of Corinth, and Paul tried to answer. And the question was, what will my resurrected body be like? <laughs> well, in all this talk of our body being raised from the tomb, the question is, what will it be like? And how can we relate to a life for all eternity in heaven with this body? Paul explains our resurrected bodies with the image of a small seed of wheat. The seed is the epitome of insignificance, but after it is buried and watered, it breaks out and becomes a beautiful plant, a, a thousand times larger than itself. This miracle, this transformation, helps us to understand our hope in the resurrection. We, like the seed of wheat, will die and be put in the tomb. But through the power of Jesus' resurrection and our faith in Him, our bodies will rise new and glorious. What you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. But what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat, perhaps, or, or, or some some other kind, but God gives it a body as He chooses, and to each of the seeds its own body. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible, it is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable, it is raised glorious. It is sown weak, it is raised powerful. Well, another question, um, Paul says in an answer to what will happen at the resurrection, he says it's going to happen and the change will happen in an instant. The body knows correction as we go, grow older and vitality gives way to arthritis, weak muscles and sagging skin. We're ending, ending up no, nothing more than a pile of dust. And we think especially of Ash Wednesday as ashes are crossed on our foreheads with the words, remember, you are dust, and to dust you will return. But we are united with Jesus resurrected. We are moved from being corruptible to being incorruptible. Through God's great love, we will be able to live forever with a new body. With Paul, we cry out, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? <laughs> I conclude now these thoughts and what Paul says about the resurrection. 
from something Paul said in his letter to the Philippians. It's a beautiful way of expressing Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. For the past few years, right on our set, we have presented to you a picture of Jesus that has a smile on his face. We are going to offer you a print of this wonderful picture, allowing you to be able to have this, this image of the smiling Christ. And you can be able to experience for yourself and those that you love the joy and the peace of Christ. On the back of the, this print, you're going to find quotes like this. When you fast, don't put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. We would like to send you this print um, and we'd like to ask you, would you send a donation of $13 or more to allow us to get it to you and to allow us to be able to continue this important program? Remember, $13 or more to allow the joy and the peace of Christ to enter your life and the lives of those that you love. Please know that I'm wishing you a very blessed Easter. May you experience the hope and the joy and the life of Christ. And I pray also that you'll stay in touch with us, sharing your Easter joys, but also sharing your prayer intentions. We're waiting for you to give us a call because we really want to minister to you. It's very vital that you stay in touch with us. And I'm praying that this life of Christ, this, this hope of the resurrection, this faith in the resurrection, will raise you right now and then assure you that we will be together in a, in a spiritual bodily form forever in eternity together. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.